pulling air conditioner hoses out of the backhoe today. This one's got a leak. Um, if you bend it, <laughs> the, the way I found it was with a sniffer, but uh, that, that bad spot there, if you bend it just right, it would leak real fast if you, if it was, and you know, sometimes it didn't leak at all, hardly. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and pull, since I had to pull them out, I tied a rope to them so I'd have a way to pull them back in. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and replace both of them that go back up under the tractor because they're a little bit of a pain to get to. And the other two lines are up here in the front and they're pretty simple, I'm gonna leave them alone. Uh, I don't think they're causing any trouble, so. Anyhow, Friday fun. Well, I changed a couple of air conditioner hoses on the backhoe and I got some new ones for the, just to this one side. I've already replaced most of those on the other side over there, but these were getting cracked um, pretty badly. And let's see, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Um, that's, two of these original hoses came with the backhoe. I mean, they've been on there since it was new. But when they start, you know, when they start getting cracked like that, your wire starts rusting. And that's one of the downfalls of washing these machines a lot is if you spray these hoses and break through that rubber, um, you'll damage the hose because it can't really dry out inside that rubber. So I try, usually when I'm washing them, I'll, I may try to spray just the fittings, but you know, try not to blast the hose too much. But these hoses, we're all still holding uh, fluid, so they'll go in the toolbox on my truck and there'll be spares just in case I have one blows out. Sometimes you get new hoses and they, uh, I always bring my old ones home. And the reason for that is sometimes you might need it for a pattern. Um, if you got the original ones, you got a part number. That's pretty helpful if you're uh, having trouble finding a hose. But yeah, that one says it was made 7 uh, 2 of 2007. So it was original with the backhoe. Uh, the ones with part numbers on them, I really like to keep just for the reason that, you know, like I say, you can call the dealer and see if they got one. Uh, you can type in a number on eBay, you can find them sometimes. Um, it's normally cheaper to get the hoses made at a hose shop, but the problem I find is if you don't get the links just right on them, some of these hoses are real critical. So if you don't bring your old one home with you, you don't have proof that they made it wrong. So, like I say, anytime I hit a hose shop, the hose, the old one will come home with me, and I got a pile of them. A lot of them probably need to go in the trash, but it's just, uh, you know, it's just one of them things that you live and learn. Um, after getting burned a couple times, you learn. Uh, been dealing with a pretty good hose shop. They're they're real reasonable on their prices, and. Uh, Another neat thing, they got a red stripe on their hose. I think it looks kind of cool. And it looks like you've done something to your machine. And uh, anyway, especially when you got oil all over it, it looks like you did something to it. Looks like you blew a hose out, but it's better to change these before they blow out uh, when you're in the middle of a project and you <laughs> sometimes your machine's down in the middle of the job and you can't move it. And that can be a bad thing. I've had that happen uh, a couple times on on a couple of bigger hoses. And uh, usually people work with you quite a bit and they try to bend over backwards to help you out. But you know, breakdowns happen. Nothing you can do about them, but you can try to prevent them if you catch your stuff early on. But uh, anyway, we're gonna keep on a digging. Well, it finally happened, it started leaking. Lost my AC today. That's probably where it was repaired before. I did a patch job on that. Oh shoot, 15 years ago. So that worked for a couple days, but it's going to be uh, time to put a condenser in front of the radiator. No fun.
got going on down here is we are digging a square pier cap on top of these piers. They're going to they'll pour these up. I don't know if they'll pour up above grade or a little below grade or how that'll work, but they got to have a square, a square, they call it a cap. The pier itself is round. You can see that machine over there digging those. Uh, these guys with the no leasing concrete truck, they are pouring one that they just drilled earlier this morning. And there's a tower crane up above my head they're using to set those big, if you look over beyond that concrete truck, there are uh, some big wire cages. They set those down in the piers. And they, they tell me they're going about 30 foot deep, so pretty, pretty good sized drill there. so that we can dig down beside the steel and not get these holes too big. So it's kind of like dipping with a shovel. So, you know, I'm not moving massive amounts of dirt, but they don't need massive amounts of dirt moved. They just need a little bit moved. So anyway, that's what we got going on here. Uh, I'm going to try to dip some of that out of the middle. I don't know if you can see that. I've probably got the back on a bad angle. Working conditions down here are kind of tight, to say the least. Um, I got people all around me. I got people above me. So it's uh, it, it makes for an interesting day. I figure somebody will probably make uh, make fun of the size of my bucket.
lunch time, taking a break. This is uh, the south wall of the elevator pit and the north wall we dug yesterday over there and they wanted to leave the road through the middle so they can still get in and out but it's going to dig across down at that end and uh, then all of the middle between these two walls will be digging out most likely they'll get me an excavator if uh, or they'll probably have one of their guys dig it i may be too busy to get back to them when they need to dig it so but everywhere you see a, a hump of dirt that's a pier like we've got over here uh, these are some pier caps i dug these have steel in them they're ready to pour that one has a square column going on it some of them have round columns going on top of them some of them they've already poured and uh but anyway pretty neat job um but they're real happy with the ditch it's not coming out quite as straight as i'd like but it's really hard rock uh or, well it's it's probably more of a shale than it is a rock but they dug another elevator pit over here they had the dirt contractor dig it out for them and the guy doing the waterproofing said he couldn't put his waterproof on it so they had to go in behind the waterproofing and put styrofoam and they, they spent a lot of extra time just dressing up the dirt so so once again i mean the work i'm doing here is is helping out in a couple of ways uh it's helping the waterproof people it's helping the guy doing the concrete because he's responsible for the hole and then also they'll be pouring concrete right up against this dirt so it's a dirt form so, and they're happy with the, I mean, it, it varies probably an inch, inch and a half in places, but for, for what they're doing and the size of this pit, it's going to be fine. Um, they could probably save a little bit of concrete by forming it, but, but then after they form it, they have to put the waterproofing over the forms, they have to overdig the hole. And in this situation, if we if we actually overdug this hole, they wouldn't be able to get any traffic in here once it's dug out. So they they still will be able to get around this one side uh, with their bobcats and smaller equipment. They probably can't get any trucks in, but they've got a pier truck they got to bring in here down through the middle, so we can't dig across that end yet. Uh, we're going to start in that corner over where my buckets are after I finish this this end here. There's a chopper on the roof fixing to take off up there. There he goes.
dirt over here for the excavator. Well, I got a pier right there, and that. Uh, there's a pier under this pile of dirt here. I don't want to break the rebar off on it. subscribers um, 
some cha some changes will be I'll I'll be running ads on the videos again. Uh, there for a while I got to run some ads and I got to make a little bit of money on it, but uh, I'm hoping to do a little bit of fun stuff with the income off of that. Maybe pay for Kenworth parts when I run into deer stuff like that. But anyhow, I appreciate my subscribers. Uh, you guys made it happen. I mean. Uh, I'm going to try to keep turning out videos as long as you guys keep watching. But tell your friends, try to get some more over here. Be, be nice. Thank you all.